again and welcome to Man's Talk. I'm Tammy Simmons Garthwaite. Hi guys, I'm Carla Garrett. Oh. And hunker down for snow, apparently. I know whatever. So, you know, I mean, when it came out on April 1st, I was like, oh, that okay. must be a no, joke. No. And then I was like, oh my God, can we just talk about that? April 1st on the internet. I, you know what's funny is I only, I only almost fell for one thing and it was actually Queen City News because he goes, there's 10 things to avoid, 10 things to do to avoid being tricked on. <laughs> April's Fool and it said one and then you would click and, and I was like I'm not clicking because there is no t nine other ones but. so uh yeah or it'd be funny if you clicked on that and you went to uh Some, brick roll you know right, right, never right. give me up uh anyway so yeah I at first I was like what this person changed I think was it, it Victoria, was Victoria said I'm done with the Republican Party and that's when I was like I didn't even have to read any further at first I was like oh no what did, oh and then I was like never mind it was a and, fleeting uh, Oh. What happened, but no. But but maybe the lesson we can all take away here is maybe we should treat every day on the internet like As this if April it's not necessarily first. true. Yeah, okay. because you know it it um there's yeah. a lot of there's a lot of weird nonsense <laughs> out there in the world. I was um yeah. There is. I I went down so many rabbit holes in I the try last, not to. Like, I'm really trying to like I'm just really trying to focus not on because it's so easy. I mean, I already sit on, I already spend way too many hours of my life every day but, but online don't... reading randomness, right? But I don't. I have to like force myself to be like, okay, but maybe I should go do something right, else. Right, but sometimes you read stuff and you're just like, man, that can't, that be, can't be that can't true. be real. <laughs> so like, what I saw yesterday was, uh, or maybe the day before, and it was. Um, it was an article on the Unabomber from okay. some history. So there's a, a, a accounts I follow called Fascinating. Okay. And it, they have like a lot of stories about like weird history stuff and whatever. And it's like a bite-sized way to get some random right. information, interesting tidbits. tidbits. Yep. Things. So it was on- A bunch on, of random useless knowledge that we, we all get. Pretty much, you know, yeah. which, you know, is kind of our jam. So, and uh, so my little bite-sized nonsense. Yep. And uh, yeah, so Kaczynski, and so it was fascinating, and they did this whole write up about, you know, how, you know, he was the Unabomber and he killed all these people and blah, 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 and he finally got caught in the FBI and blah. And I was like, huh, is that gonna mention, you know, I'm kind of like reading through the thread. And I'm like, wow, is it not gonna mention at all that Kaczynski went to Harvard when he was 16 years old yeah. and the psychology department of Harvard decided to experiment on him for three <laughs> years at the age where your psyche is pretty much forming. Yeah. And the experiment was to confront him with arguments where he would present things logically and they would just be like, no, Nonsense. you're wrong. And it's that same thing with that experiment where they do the, the lines on the board or the sticks, right? Yeah, which one's the... And there's one guy who's the patsy, and then there are 10 other or 12 other people who are all plants. Right. And then within three rounds, the one person who's like, clearly this short stick is shorter than this yeah. long stick is long, within three rounds changes their mind based on peer group pressure. So you can imagine when like, like I don't know, shrinks at Harvard yeah, are, are messing with somebody's psyche, right? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, they basically created the monster. Right. So that's just one example of don't believe everything you read or maybe right. go research things. But right. the problem is everything is being changed real time right. online. So don't, you don't know. I mean, like, honestly, I think that's going to be the gap between generations is I think we there's might. Gonna be, there's going to be this gr age bracket that depended on technology for information and reliably so for a while and then there's going to be this generation beyond that that are going to be like you actually went online and thought that that stuff was true well it, it, i think it's going to be different because how do you know something's true the only way you can know is if you physically see it with your own eyes or if you have knowledge right so let's say I mean, I, I, I would have wanted to use the example of, let's say the world is round. <laughs> but apparently we can't say that anymore either, okay? I mean, I'm half kidding, internet, don't <laughs> freak out, okay? Um, but I think, for example, that's kind of what happened during COVID, mm. is some of us actually had 
knowledge, like meaning like, oh, I was taught probably, not, maybe not, but the right story about what is a virus or how right. do viruses spread or, or whatever. Or that you're like, wait, I think I know what this is. Since, think, and let me go, look and, okay, I right, think. And, and be like, That's oh, how right, I feel like I am. I have a limited knowledge of enough stuff that when something seems like, it's just like vocabulary. But I'm, you don't know something's fishy unless you don't know something. You know right. what I'm saying? That's what I mean. So, you have to have some level of So what I'm saying is I thinking. think in your breakdown there where you're like, okay, there are going to be these people who, okay, I would even say there are people who had like book knowledge mm -hmm. maybe before it was, and I'm not going to say not everything that's written down is not corruptible or no. corrupted or BS. Right. I don't know. I would say probably the last 50 years of peer-reviewed science is BS, but but so people, but you know, with a base sort of sense of knowledge, and now the post-internet kids, and I might even say the app people, like I think there's something that's happening where everyone is consuming, like an app tells you how to do, do certain, certain things. things. Yes, instead of. Like the internet, when we got it, kind of was like oh, this big open it, pool of just it, knowledge. It, it was a little bit like being like, "Wow, there is there is a limitless library." Yes, I remember my first my first inter internet time frame way long time ago. We had this. We bought my business partner and I bought a computer. And we got it online, <laughs> and I think we had CompuServe, and we were super excited. And there we were. We were like, "Okay, so now what?" <laughs> And we were like, well, there's all these websites out there. And even then I was like, well, how do you know that? How do we know where they are? How do I know where, how do I know who's got a website? Because right. there was no Google or Yahoo or any of that stuff. And you were like, okay, well, that's great that everybody's putting stuff out there, but well, I, it was hard to wrap to... around your head around like, how is anybody, what is there going to be a phone? Well, what is there going to be a phone book? Well, well and, apparently and, and, there is. I mean, you know, there, there are classic clips out there of, of people, you know, in the maybe mid-90s, I would guess, early 90s, yeah. you know, the, 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 the anchors of the big NBC, yeah. ABC, those people, you know, where they're literally like, like what is the internet? <laughs> so what, are we going to have like an address? Like it would have to say, you know, National Broadcast Corporation? <laughs> what is a dot com? You know, it was. Like, <laughs> it, it, it's like it, it sounds so absurd when you relay it now, but it really was that bizarre. Like, wait, this is stupid. So here's my question. When productivity shot up because we got email, okay, why didn't we go to like a three-day week? Like, because I think we're actually driving ourselves, ourselves insane. We are, because that's the nature, I think, of humanity. I think that's the nature <laughs> of our society is that, so prior. But then it, we're burning out. Right. In 40 hours, you used to go and do this, you know, and you kind of just did it at a pace. And everybody went to lunch. Yeah, and it and was like a flow. And, it was a and if you were lucky, you went to lunch and you had three martinis. Oh, all the time. <laughs> I mean, I'm not, I didn't have three martinis all the time, but I'm thinking my first couple jobs, Going out and having a drink with your boss at lunch was normal. completely normal, hundred yeah. yeah. percent on the See, norm. See now, I blame. Here's my theory. I would know, but all my theories about why the workplace sucks now, it's because of the control freaks. It's yeah. the meddling. Yeah. So like, if you didn't meet someone in college who became your partner, where do you uh, meet other people Most at, at work. work? Yeah. Then a lot of we people. said, well, anything because someone got harassed and had to make so it clean. everyone's problem. So now you can't be problem, friendly. Now right? you can't even say you look nice today. Right. Well, that's awful. Right. You're allowed to say you look nice in that dress. I believe is like corporate speak for a flattering compliment these days. That is a attractive. No, probably not. No. That is a acceptable dress. You have a <laughs> you have a pleasing shape. shape. <laughs> right. Oh, I don't know. Probably not. Right? <laughs> Definitely don't say pear shape. Yeah. No, but it is true. And and like and so then we did interject technology, whether it was email or computers or everything. So we could do things much faster. And we did. And we did. And I mean in a lot of ways it did allow us to do more. But then you're right. Like, so why can't we do? Why why can't we just do more in less time? Or are we all just having to do more? Well, I think what's happening is we've written so many laws that it feels like people are actually just almost feeding the machine, mm. like the paperwork thing yeah. that we talk about sometimes. You know, because when we said last week, you know, the incentives are unaligned and. Yeah. It's just, it just seems like there's well, a I mean, lot of wheels. Dan's to... got a lot of crazy, his employer. Um, so Dan was hired remotely before COVID. So he's always, always been remote. Never had an office. Yep. Um, 
works for a major corporation. Um, had to stay obviously home through COVID, <laughs> which was nothing abnormal for us. Right. It was Dan never his job never changed. Um, now in the past year, I think they've um, started pushing people to go back into the office, and which at first it was like, but I, I never was in an office. Like right. that wasn't what you hired me to do. <laughs> I and was remote, so you can't now make they, me not be right, remote. Right. So like whatever. Right? So then they're like, well, we need you to go into the office once a week. But going into the office once a week in Dan's job literally means swiping in through the security system to show that you were there. Wow. So there's no, and there's none of Dan's coworkers work in this <laughs> office whatsoever. There is nobody in that office has anything to do with what Dan does. And it's silliness. It really is silliness. Well, it's someone who's going, well, now there's a corporate policy and I'd have to check It's a check box. the box. And the, the, the next level of management has to go in two days a week. And then they had to set criteria if you're this many minutes away from work or if this many miles away from work. So we're just laughing that we're like, well, we, here we go. We put in the office and we draw a circle around it. We make sure the house is outside the circle. <laughs> like, and it's just silly because... He doesn't work a traditional day. I mean, a lot of time he's working with people in, you know, Indonesia right. or wherever. I don't even know. And so he might be working at, you know. 11 o'clock at night, right, but not at 9 o'clock in the morning. Because they have to do something. Yeah, right. And he gets sure. up in the morning and sometimes I'm like, why isn't he just starting his day? And then I realize, oh, because nobody else is starting his day, their, their day. Right. So he can do other things. And it's just. Well, and so that would be interesting, too. I'm sure there are studies about this, but. I know initially working from home for me was kind of hard because it's I had discipline. been grown, you know, because I had worked my yeah. whole life in going mm -hmm. to offices and having a boss yeah. and whatever. And that, that, that change to actually being like, oh, wait, I got to like sack yeah. up and be a grown up and, you know, like do the work right. and all of that. Yeah. Right. Was an adjustment. And I'm kind of curious, well, like, like I feel like maybe generationally also we probably did better at home because we had a normal discipline of how you're how how, what supposed, you're supposed to produce right. in mean, an average it, day like maybe even in in Dan's case specifically in Dan's case I mean even though he's super social he is an introvert so he is perfectly comfortable sitting over there in the corner and working by himself right. for eight ten hours at a time <laughs> and never needs to interact with that does not want to have a Right. conversation over the cup of coffee right. in the kitchen, like, leave me the heck alone. Um, but then on the flip side of it, every past job that he's had, they all have these little, um, I don't know what they are, chat, they're not chats, oh, but like they have Slack little Slack right. groups yeah, yeah. for all the different companies. Like, and, and Dan usually is the impetus, like, let's have this group. And then they get <laughs> right. together once a month and talk about their you know, next thing. job. That yeah. kind of <laughs> so it's just well, funny how people are. I just actually realized I was also saying two entirely conflicting things, <laughs> both on the one hand that the, uh, you know, we, we, oh, look, we were so productive when we were old, you know, we, we were trained to be productive, but also like slack, slagging on the younger ones. Um, for, for their productivity, but while also arguing we should have shorter work weeks. Well, so. no, but I, think, I do think there's a, also a generational thing with, and younger people, will, they will naturally disagree because I do not think they can see this because you can't see something that you don't know. I do think there's a unusual um, expectation from some younger people that their younger life is going to be the same as somebody who's, say, 20 or 30 years older than their lives. Like, they yeah. think that, like, well, I'm going to go get a job, and I'm just going to have a title, and I'm just, where's my office? And you're yeah, like, it's office? Yeah, sort of the paying your dues thing There's has a, maybe well, lost yes. by the wayside There's this a little entitlement bit. entitlement expectation, it seems. It, you see it in real estate. Young people that you're like, my first house, I was like, does it have a roof? Is it straight? Right. Like, you know, like, is it going to hold the snow? I mean, honestly, till, like, we lived in ADUs right. in South Africa right. as as young lawyer just what engineer. You did, right? Like, we and were then, in someone's backyard because you know, you you're saving. Now, and... Like, I mean, even for us looking for a new home, my... But see, we were in people's backyards and ADUs and crappy houses well, because those things still existed. I know. But you know why they don't exist now? Zoning. Yeah. Blame the government. You yeah. know what, kids? If you're suffering, if you're poor, you have to start looking at the real culprit. It's the I think large federal government. You know, I saw a thing, we'll bring it to Manch in a second. I saw a tweet yesterday or the day before from one of our Congress critters, and they were talking about like the issues, right? And the list was 
it, you know, it was affordable housing, uh, drug rehabilitation, homeless shelter stuff. Uh, let's t like two or three. I can't even we're, remember we're, right now. You and I are like monetary policy. <laughs> so, so, so I'm like looking over that list, and I was like, and and it was literally like, hey, Granite Staters, let's all pitch in on this stuff. And I looked at that list, and I'm sorry, my my literal thought was, God, that's gross. And I was like, that is a list of. Uh, how to make the state worse. Yeah. It's literally like, who do you think you're attracting when you're offering more homeless services? Right. I'm sorry, but the reality is you're you more. attract more homeless people. So I want to go make a list on the flip side, which is let us build ADUs. Yep. So someone who is starting out their career and can only afford $1,200 to pay for right. a tiny home in someone else's right. backyard can pay that, right. I will take that money that would make me super happy to. Right, it, it, it serves both sides, sides of the equation. You know, it's like, and. And, and it, like, I mean, it, it addresses like things that people just don't always think about. Cause people, it's sound bites, homeless, affordable housing, affordable, well, what is affordable? Like what, the, the government's idea of affordable housing is not what we, you and I are suggesting. You and I are suggesting let people find ways to create affordable housing. Affordable housing doesn't mean let's steal some of Carla and Tammy's money and build a house so that Johnny can live just like Tammy and Carla right. and, but not pay for it. So, <laughs> all right. So, that so was now that we very... ventured out, speaking of not paying of things. So did you see the article? And I'm torn on that. I, I understand like the impetus. I actually understand the whole concept. I just think it's hundred percent wrong. So there was an article the other day um, that the city of Manchester is considering an unsick day for their employees. Now keep in mind, we have 2,817 employees. Um, unsick on, day meaning, meaning like, a, like a mental health free no, day? No, like, well, no, I mean, like no, you don't have to work and you get paid? Well, yeah, you don't have to work and you get paid, okay. but it's so, Officials are proposing an ordinance change that would give full-time city staff additional paid leave time for wellness visits in hopes of spurring employees to seek more preventative care and potentially reduce the city's health care costs. So I'm like, okay, so there's no secret that health care costs are continually increasing. Well, also, I think that there's a lot of dis Ease, right. disease, unwellness that has come out of COVID. Well, yes, but I'm just saying, the number goes right. up. It's not just Manchester. They mentioned Bedford. Everybody's health kits, every government. <laughs> oh, you mean like, I don't know, we said back in the 90s when everyone was like, you know what we need? Universal health care. Right. And so, libertarians were like, you know what you're going to get? You're going to incentivize <laughs> people to be sicker. And we, yeah. um, here we are. So, for years, this is not a just this past year. Every year, um, Manchester is self-insured, which does, doesn't mean that they don't have an insurance company. They still probably deal with Cigna or Anthem or whomever. I think it's Anthem um, that manages it. But basically, every dollar paid for a doctor's visit or anything is paid by the taxpayer. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's what self-insured really means. Um, so think about it. So we've got a bunch of employees. We've done different plans over the years to try to incentivize them to shop for quality care at a lower price. You know, like if you're going for an MRI, some MRIs in one building might be $4,000 and then over here in this other building might only be $2,000. So what, how do you incentivize? Well, also, of course, because the market is so distorted, um, it's, it's hard. half the time you don't know well, what the pricing right. is. Right, so I think Manchester at one point did have, on certain, again, it's not going to be on everything, but on a lot of the more common things, here's where, you know, and then they, you would get, I think the employees would get a kick, not a kickback, but, you know, they'd get some benefit, some bonus to saving money, okay. which meant that's incentivizing things, right? So in this case, I'm like, okay, so co the cost of health care has gone up. It does Giving, paying yet another day off for city employees is not going to slow down the rate at which the health care costs go up. It's not going to make people, one more day off is not going to really, in the big picture, make 2,817 people healthier. Because who honestly believes that everybody's going to use that day off to go to the doctor or wellness kit? So, so do you remember... Um uh, th th there was someone in our community who actually ran a company that I think it was called Orange. It was Aaron Day. And it was a large company that was in almost all the states in America. And basically what it did is it provided incentives to 
employees that if they get certain parts of their medical stuff under control, yeah. let's say you have high blood yeah. pressure and your doctor's like, you should bring it lower. And it was an app. Yep. And it literally was like, like gamifying healthcare yeah. in order to align the incentives so that someone is like, like if we want people to be they, healthier, don't give them another free day. day right. Give them something well, where you're say, like, hey, so if you walk, at yes. 10,000 steps a week? Or so I have an app. I have Anthem Insurance. And I have an app called Sydney. A day. 10,000 right? a day. And so. on my <laughs> app, I can choose to fill out my annual wellness profile. Yeah. And it does. It asks you, like, if you do this, or do you belong to a gym? Do you, and you earn points. Right, you but do. don't ask if you belong no, to no, a I gym. No, no, I know. I'm just saying, you go there is, the have gym. you had blood work? You know, they, there's all these things. Did you go, have you gone for your checkup? Did you right. get your eyes checked? Have you been to the dentist? You know, like all these different things because they can see if you've done them because right. it's your You're, insurance. Right. Um, and then you earn Point. points. And I forget what. You can get things, buy things. Out. Anyway, I'm sure we did. Um, and it's, it's, it's an incentive. Right, but I Anthem made it through healthcare because all the monopolies, all the big a uh, big pharma and big healthcare folks made it through. Someone like Aaron's company actually got shut down yeah. by the federal government because they were like, oh, now you're going to have to comply with all these weird regulations yeah. because we've, na we've now well, nationalized I think, healthcare. I think even Anthem has to contend with things like that. Um, I mean, imagine how much they spend on their lawyers. Like, that is just wasted money because of red tape. And, and it's just... It is boggling because I agree, we should incentivize. And there's not, I mean, I just don't think giving another day off because it's not like city employees don't have any personal pay time off. You know what I mean? It, if these were jobs that had, you only get one week vacation. I mean, no what's that going to cost us? I well, was, uh, like if it's 2,000 million, right? right? I was going to say, I was going to do the math, you know, 2,800 people. At, you know, so let's, 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 let's go on the low end and say they make an average of $20 an hour. Eight, for seven hours even. That's still right. 140 times 28, you know, like that's... No, well, let's just say $100 a day, it's already at a quarter right. of a million. Exactly. And then it's a lot more and than that's, that. Right. So. And that's, right. And, and are we going to save, like they say that we have a 1.4 million overrun in healthcare costs. So we're going to spend another quarter of a million dollars to try to what, take... One, you know, hundred thousand dollars off of this. I don't. Look, to me, I, I just. Don't, I mean, I, I understand. think everybody. Everybody gets caught up in this well, benefit I, thing for government employees, and I'd like to go back to the days when people took city jobs years ago. That this is always the way it was when I was younger. You took a city job knowing you were going to get paid crap. That was the reality. You were not going to get rich off your city job. But what you would get is it's really good health. You'd get a pension and you'd get great health care. But the pensions were like you had to be 65, right. not 55, now, now down right. to 52. Right. So, and everyone lives 30 years And now years we longer. have to compensate them as they want comparable salaries to not being in government. And it's like, okay, but this is no longer the, this is no longer, this isn't doable. That's the reality. When we're promising, when we're signing union, union contracts, that are guaranteeing raises for future years, Which, how can we possibly know that we can afford it three years from now? We can't. The well, reality well, is, is we can speculate, we can come up with things, but the reality is, is these same people, we need to rein in these healthcare costs, so instead of trying to rein them in by saying, well, we're gonna have to cost shift to the people using the healthcare, we're not doing that. Mm -hmm. We're gonna say, oh, no, no, we'll no. Give we're gonna give benefit. everybody something free. Who guess who pays for that? I do, and you do. Yep. And nobody worried about our health care. Just saying. Never been healthier without health care. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I'm not going to Health care is a weird, oh. it's a weird thing. Dan and I um, went to a med spa this week, which was interesting. It doesn't need to go into any details, but um, the difference in. Um, I got a med spa facial of some yep. sort because of a thank you card yep. that someone gave me for some stuff I did. And I had no idea what I booked till I was like lying there. And I'd already had like six things go wrong that morning. Like, you know, when you yes. go to the bank early and, and everything's the wrong. Yeah. And then this happens and that and happens. You're like, and I burnt I my leg went. and whatever. So I'm lying there and the lady has pulled out this thing God. and she goes, so this is the diamond head that we're going to exfoliate your face like, with? And I'm like, I'm lying there. My heart starts racing. <laughs> and I'm like, um, I don't know how to tell you this, but um, I'm feeling very <laughs> anxious right now. I'm not sure I want you to send yeah. me for my face. Right? 
And then I was like, oh, okay, come fine. on, what's the worst that could happen? You're at a spa. I'm sure it'll be fine, Carla. So. But it's still, but it's just the, yeah. the um, general atmosphere over similar dialogue right. at this med spa was super easy, super convenient. Um, I did not think in all, this was not covered by insurance, which we're, but we can use our uh, HSA. Right. Um, if I do it, do this via a doctor, it's still not covered under my insurance. But even if it was, I still have to meet that like you know ten thousand dollar oh. deductible. So maybe eight months into it, it might be. So I'm like, wait so a minute. So also, I think with the med spas, I mean that is candidly a market response. Yep. It is the oh, they, way they, you, you they work very around. clearly said we are. This is because of the lack of availability in the medical profession. Right, and and I mean, I don't know when people are gonna start talking about this, but there is a severe shortage of medical yes. people, and maybe the question needs to be asked, why is that? Yep. Were they in one of the groups that were forced jabbed at like an alarming um, rate? I don't know, I just think we've grown, we've overcomplicated healthcare to the point that your doctor, you know, if you go back, I always say this, if you go back 20, 30 years, your doctor spent most of his day talking to patients about their health and what to do. So Johnny, you've had the flu 16 times now. Maybe I mean, we have to look at something. Now the doctor says, here's your, the girl said, this is your temperature, this is your blood pressure, here's your chart. Okay, we're gonna try this prescription. Nice, see you in I six mean, weeks. Arguably, I mean, arguably, I just learned this. I thought it was pretty interesting. Um, it's, it's not, of course, the, the reason why we had the opioid crisis, but one of the sort of notes that's come out is to your point when they sort of Formalized is not the right word. I mean, literally created formulas. Yes. And one of them was the pain chart, yes. right? So you the had smiley those four faces, faces mm -hmm. and then it's, you know, you could say from here to there. And that graphic actually plays a yes. role because in everybody the opioid crisis because they started pain managing and people don't necessarily know. Like if you've only cut your finger and you haven't, I don't know, like had, you might think like, this like is had the a worst miscarriage pain. or so, like, like something where right. it's like a profound- Migraine versus a uh, stuffy nose. Right, like if you don't know, you don't know. So people be like, oh, well, I'm a this. I'm a nine, you know? and you're like, and no, you're like, not. Here, here, have some morphine. Yep. Don't get addicted. <laughs> well, and then, and then those addicted got Clever and started pay, uh, shop doctor shopping. Sure, and then doc, you know, I opioid mean, addiction is a real yeah. thing. But I mean, and some doctors figured it out and were like, "No, well, you do not get to." Because people, I worked for an orthopedic surgeon. People would come up literally to the counter and be like, "I need a refill," and they'd be like, "Yeah, we can't do that for it's you." So sad. So sad. We got the warning, yes. so I'm sure there's something. Um, I know we have an NHGOP delegate meeting coming up April 13th. Yes. I know you're out of town. Time. Well timed. I was like, oh, I'm not a delegate anymore. And then I was like, oh, crap, I am. So uh, that's coming up. I don't think there's really. I think the home spring. show is this weekend. I saw a banner. Oh, a new, a made the in New, new Hampshire, Hampshire Expo, Expo is this weekend. That's always fun yep. to do. I'm going to miss Actually, that. we're going to go to that um, on Friday. It's fun. Yeah. You know, it's, it's Actually, not... Friday, it starts on Friday. It's at the um, Crown Plaza. No, uh, the, no rad, the Radisson. The, the, the Double Tree here. Double Tree. That's that what one. I was trying to do. I'm like pointing. <laughs> you know, that one right there. Um, and that's a lot of fun. The tickets aren't expensive. And it's actually really great to see all the incredible yeah. things that we are yeah. making. Made in New Hampshire Expo. Yeah. Go check it out yeah. this weekend. And um, don't put your shovel away because we're getting six to 12 inches of snow tonight. No, and, we're not. Um, but it'll be gone <laughs> by, you know, Monday. So whatever. Um, that's I mean, actually, I'm, I'm like, if we if it's coming in, give us a real nor'easter, give us a dump, make it the last that's what one. I think it's just tonight and tomorrow. It's not, yeah. it's not the, people act like they've never seen snow before. <laughs> um, that's all we got. I will not be here next week. I will be sitting on an island someplace. Uh, and, I, I um, will jealously either uh, be not here as well, just in, in camaraderie. My guest that I invited, unfortunately, has her trial, yeah. so I've got to go find another <laughs> guest or come entertain everyone yep. myself. All right. <laughs> Have a great weekend, everybody. Bye, guys.